Hi there, today we're going to talk about Scratch Junior and what you can do uh, when saving Scratch Junior and if you uh, want to move what you have onto a separate device and so on. In this particular tutorial I'm only going to be talking about Scratch Junior, the offline desktop version. So not the version that sits on iPads but rather the version that sits on a PC or a Mac. This is a fairly new innovation by the people who do Scratch Junior. So if I open up my Scratch Junior here, it takes a moment to load. Here we go. If I click on the home, you can see that there are four projects that exist here. Now, that's because a student has been working on it. Let's say that they want to create another project. Um, they can go ahead and create that, put in some code and so on. And then if I go back to home, you can see that that new project, Project 5, has also been created. Let's say that I'm sharing my PC with other groups at other times of the day or with other classes and I don't want my a, a new class to see Project 5 or Project 4 or Project 1 for example. What I can do is this. I'm going to delete Project 5 by just clicking the left button for a little bit and the X comes up. I'm going to delete Project 4 by doing the same thing. I'm going to delete project 1 by clicking and pressing the X. So if this is what I'm happy with, I'm going to uh, now close out of Scratch. I can do it by pressing the X or going File, Exit. So now I'm out of Scratch. If I go back in, I can now see that I only have two projects now. So this is how I want it to be for all of my devices. So I might have 10 devices. And going in and deleting and all of that is a fair bit of work. And also, it would be more work if within some of these other programs, the students go in and make changes that I'm not aware of. Then if I go ahead and save this, then it's not how I originally wanted it to be either. So I'll just quickly get rid of these. So this is what we can do. So I'm going to go close out of Scratch again. Let's just make sure it works how I want it to work first of all. So I'll just click on the little animated tack object and tack gets a goal, which is terrific. I'm going to get out of Scratch. Works how I want it to work. And what I want to show you is inside of my PC, if I go to Documents and I search down, there is one called Scratch JR. So if I double click on this, now this is where my programs are stored. They're stored in a SQL Lite file, so SQL Lite file, and I'm not going to open that because it would uh, it wouldn't make any sense to me. It only makes sense to computers. But this is where my file is stored. So what I want to do is I want to store this copy of the database somewhere safe. So I'm going to create a new folder. So here's my new folder called ScratchJunior.SQLLite.Restore. And at the moment, there's nothing in there. If I grab Scratch Junior, so this whole database, and I copy it, and I go inside here and I paste it. Now I have a copy of the version of Scratch Junior that I want all the students to initially see. Now if I close out of File Explorer, and I open up Scratch Junior again. So here is my Scratch Junior. I have it how I want the students to see it. A student comes in, they decide, well, I'm going to create a new project. Okay, so I've created a new program. And also, I'll go back to home and I'll go into project three. And this student has also uh, messed around with this. He's moved the ball over there. He's moved TAC to that location. When this program now runs, TAC moves in places that I didn't really want TAC to move. The ball doesn't go through the hoop, but the child has worked on their program, or whatever. If I close this down and then I open up Scratch Junior again, you can see that those changes are now reflected here. Project 1 exists and Project 3, it looks like tax out of place. And if I run it, it's going to run the way that the student left it. So that can be a bit of a problem. Creating this folder and the Scratch Junior version that I created within it 
notice the timestamp is 1109 and this timestamp is 1142 which is much later what scratch have attempted to do is that uh, it should allow me to go here and choose restore projects it will restore the 1109 version but if i click on this and open up scratch again you can see that it hasn't put the 1109 version on the screen it's put the later version on the screen and i can prove that because here i still have 1143 it's a little bit of a deficiency in scratch in that it doesn't allow me just to say well restore projects and it comes up with the old version but that's not to say that all is lost if we exit out of this and we go back to our folder what i can do because i have this old version or the original version stored in here i can simply copy that by choosing it and just say copy Control c would have worked and if i go in here delete the later version and then just paste you can see that I now have the 1109 version within the Scratch folder. So then if I load the program, it will load the original version, which it does, and that's what I want. So I've, the next set of students can see Project 3. It's in a way that I anticipate it will work for them, and they see it how the other students saw it at the beginning before they started doing work on it. Even though this new restore projects doesn't seem to work properly or at least not all the time there is an alternative that you can do which is simply to go into the file and restore from the restore file that you initially created one thing you need to be aware of is that if you do go into the restored version and copy it and paste it inside here okay if i replace the file in the destination that means that any changes that a student made here will be gone so you might want to think about saving uh, student versions of this file in a safe place so that they can come back to it anyway i hope this helps thanks for watching